Hi, Eliza. Welcome to the Soulful Podcast. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So you are an ex-New Ager as well, and I have not heard your story yet, so I'm really excited to jump into your testimony. So let's just start from the beginning and how you first kind of got trapped by the New Age. Yeah, so um, my testimony is kind of like three phases, and the, the beginning is when I was about 20 years old. And it started with um, estrangement from my family. So I had like these huge, deep wounds in my heart. Um, and I started searching from there. So I started to deal with things like covert narcissism, betrayal, abandonment. And essentially, I kind of was separated from my family without wanting to be necessarily. And then that, you know, Satan loves to break families apart. And so that was the first kind of gateway for me because I felt um, immediately broken and not good enough. And that um, like my family didn't love me, especially like that mother wound. That's so much in the new age um, of just like this devastation that I had in my heart. Um, I started to immediately look elsewhere and I started I immediately got caught up with this woman who was a Reiki practitioner she told me I was a light worker she told me that I had like all of these um, blessings on my life and so that was like the main uh, focus for me uh, like getting sessions getting psychic readings trying to figure out like why I couldn't be loved by my family and so that was the immediate um, first kind of like introduction to new age and then of course it just kind of spiraled from there it just it's crazy how like deep it got and I guess we can talk about that but um yeah so I immediately started getting into the law of attraction um I used to watch um read so many Louise Hay and Hay House um kind of uh, books I was really into like Abraham Hicks Louise Hay you can heal your life book was like my bible back then and I just really thought oh I can change my life through my thoughts I can shift things around I can figure out what's wrong with me and then I'll feel loved but really like the only way that you can find that um, thing that you're missing inside like I was was through Christ and I didn't realize that so many years later when I was saved. And so that was kind of like the start for me. I got into Reiki, um, yoga. I eventually got into the cult of Kundalini yoga, um, which was really crazy and intense. Um, and then it kind of just, so that was like phase one. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I very much relate to everything that you just discussed. I was actually a Reiki master and doing Reiki sessions on people in my home and then in my office. I too was struggling with a broken family and health issues, went to a Reiki practitioner. She told me that I was a light worker, that I had this golden light, this golden aura around me, that I was a healer, that I was gifted. I needed to get into this work. And immediately it planted that seed. It's funny how the enemy will use other people in new age to continue to suck us in. And I did an entire episode. Oh, geez. This was back in the beginning of the summer about how Reiki is evil. Um, and many people took offense to that. They're thinking, well, you used to do Reiki and I trusted you and all of these things. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like I was in complete deception because, um, Reiki, energy healing, chakras, it all comes from Hinduism. And first and foremost, I mean, it should be a red flag. If you need to pay for healing, like that, that is a problem for emotional, spiritual healing. Um, it really is such a slippery slope, like you just mentioned. And can you touch on why Kundalini in particular is really dangerous in the new age? Yeah, I mean, there are so many reasons. I would, I think the very first thing was that I immediately bypassed red flags. The the kind of like guru of a person who created it is a man named Yogi Bhajan, who is dark, demonic, evil. He is, um, he, he like the people in the cult believe that he's like Jesus, and like he was sexually abusive to people inside for many, many years. And then he pretty much taught the other leaders to do the same. 
And so like that right there, that was like the first thing I saw when I was researching and I immediately bypassed it because I was like, no, I follow these people and they do this. So it's completely different. And it's like that that in itself is satanic and evil that that my heart would be so deceived like that over something that's so evil and that has clearly hurt so many people. So and then aside from that, you're channeling demon energy into your body. Um, you go into trance-like states. Um, you are told to like wrap your head in a turban because it affects your like cranial uh, bones. And so like it's going to make you more enlightened or just like have downloaded information to make you essentially to make you feel like you're better than other people and then of course the evil of the serpent and the kundalini energy that flows through your body and some people have really crazy experiences that are um, really harmful to their physical body and then they kind of um, open themselves up to um, being possessed by demons and like uh, this is just so crazy to me because if you say this to someone you sound crazy and I think like that's part of Satan's um manipulation tool is like when you share the truth with people you end up um being like subject to people being like no you're taking this too far this is too much you know that kind of thing absolutely so. in 2 corinthians 4 4 it says the god little g of this age has blinded the minds of those who don't believe and i would say i mean in my case i believed i was following jesus uh, I believed I was a Christian, but yet I was doing all of these practices, dabbling in all of these things. And of course, it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, you cannot eat at the table of demons and at the table of the Lord. And just like you, I had some crazy experiences in Kundalini, and I cannot believe that I would actually pay people money to help me activate a snake, a serpent at the base of my spine so that I could become more enlightened and heal myself. In reality, all of these new age practices, they just go back to that first um, verse or verse three in Genesis where Satan is coming through as a serpent, tempting Eve and saying, Hey, if you take a bite of this apple, you too can be like God. So it's all about becoming your own God, little G to heal your life, manifest all your desires, have whatever you want, become enlightened. And like you said, you do, you create this complex and believe that you are better and know kind of the secrets of the universe when you get involved in these practices and it does blind you to the deception. And then when you understand the deception and start sharing it, I had the exact same experience. Everyone just kind of like scoffing and laughing. I remember years ago when my mother-in-law had told me that yoga, um, uh, she watched a YouTube video of a woman giving a testimony that she became possessed by a demon while practicing yoga. And I just thought that was hilarious. I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, and now of course I totally get it. I understand it because I had experiences within yoga classes where it very much felt like the manifestation of a demonic dark force or spirit that was not good. I had the same experience in Reiki. Um, mm -hmm. and so it's really interesting once you have these experiences, you begin to understand, but also like you, I had all these red flags along the way. Um, like the Yogi Bhajan, how he was sexually assaulting women within his group and all of these things and just kind of like shrugging off my shoulders or kind of picking and choosing what resonated with me and then leaving the rest. And I think that that's really big in new age because it's all about pick or mix spirituality, essentially. Yeah, it's crazy. It, it really just like those, the scripture about like he closes the eyes and the hearts of those you know what I mean? And it, and then like once you're saved, you really see the way and it's just like a brutal awakening of like, Lord, I repent, you know, of all of this, because once you see, you can't unsee, you know? Exactly. And so what did your life in the new age look like? You're kind of getting involved in like Kundalini, Reiki, channeling, what else did you get involved in, share, teach? What did that look like for you? Kind of like in the deepest part of the new age. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So I ended up, um, I went to like a health coach training and that was kind of like another layer of my understanding. I'd never heard the terms um, self-love or um, 
self-care before. And then that was like kind of like this spiral of, okay, I want to build a business. And then it's the hustle culture. It's the obsession you see of money all around you, of people trying to build their businesses in like a secular way. And um, I didn't know there was anything wrong with that. And so I just kind of got sucked in that. I said to myself, okay, I'm going to build a life coaching business. So I want to work for people to learn about their businesses. And that is really where I got my like new age, like PhD, because I started to work for companies, um, like helping them behind the scenes. I started as a virtual assistant. And then I ended up getting contracts to help people to grow their businesses and actually to work on their launches. So I got really good at helping um, really demonic, satanic businesses make a lot of money. And so it was like to my detriment on so many levels. Like I saw like the evil of how you can be treated by people in the new age. It's just such a transactional a relationship you feel like you are nothing unless you're producing and I really with my wound that I already had from my estrangement and my family challenges it just really kind of solidified for me like my worth is is nothing unless I'm working hard or I'm producing or I'm creative so I was just constantly taking all these expensive courses to grow my skills um, and then the two uh, I guess, businesses that I worked for. I ended up working for them for over five years. I tried to quit three times and it really felt like Satan was pr imprisoning me in these places because um, to answer your question, what they did was it was goddess worship, um, moon blood rituals. So you would give your blood to the earth, um, Celtic pagan, like wheel of the year. I don't know if you've heard of that, like Samhain, is like the time of Halloween. And so like you do these rituals, um, it's kind of like open for the season. And then you're basically like worshiping the created instead of the creator. And so like that was some of it. And then um, like womb mysteries, mystery schools. And then that's really when I was working for them where they're like, oh, you have a gift, Eliza. You should be creating your own programs and things. And that's when my channeling started to kick in. Um, I used to get woken up in the middle of the night by the goddess Bridget. And she would tell me, like my body would just wake up and then move to my office and be writing down these things. And she gave me all these songs to sing with my clients, all of these practices to offer, um, to sell to my clients. I used to do channeled meditations to the core of the earth. And the Lord very recently reminded me of that. I hadn't done that in years. And he reminded me of those meditations. I did a podcast about this, but how it's actually you're um, bringing your energy to the core of the earth, which is hell. And I was just struck by that, that I, and I had to like, I was like on my knees, like repenting for that because I did that so many times in my business. I actually had a membership called the flower coven um, where I offered flower essences to my clients. And then we did like these themed rituals every month. And it was just like so much stuff that was so obviously sinful and dark and demonic. Um, but it's packaged in like, oh, magic and beauty and like, you know, excuse me, divine feminine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, so it's just so crazy that I was just so, um, caught up in the moment of it and um yeah I cannot believe that I'm so grateful that I'm saved you know that Absolutely. I know now yeah yeah 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light and it's wild in the beginning of my journey I would go into meditations and I would literally see what I thought were angels like these angel light beings. And I'm thinking this is so beautiful. Or I'm thinking, oh, it's the Pleiadians. And I, like you, I, I I was channeling. I'd be in a Reiki session. I would have downloads come through. I would know something about um, the client's past loved one or something with their health that was going on. And people are thinking, oh, I'm so gifted. I'm a great gifted healer. In reality, those downloads, that information was coming from a demonic force, a familiar spirit that was attached to that person. And then speaking through me, giving me that information, because again, it just keeps you hooked in. It keeps you enticed. And can you speak on the, um, 
what the whole blood magic, giving your your blood to the earth, how that is counterfeit of the enemy and um, counterfeiting the blood of Jesus Christ and what he paid for us. Yeah, hundred percent. The only blood that's pure and will purify this is Jesus Christ's blood. And so any blood rituals, including abortion, I mean, a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's true, is a sacrifice to Satan. And so whenever we give our blood in any way, a lot of the women in this um, space will like paint their forehead with blood or they'll put their period blood all over their body. They'll give their period blood to their house plants. Um, and, and this is another case when the person who taught me this ritual, um, I ignored another red flag. And that was that, and a lot of people don't know this, or maybe they just don't understand because this is becoming part of secular culture. Now you can look at like um, magazines for young girls, like Teen Vogue or something, and they teach you to do these rituals. And it might seem unassuming and it might seem like, oh, it's just like a fun thing to do with my my girlfriends because we're learning to love our periods, that kind of thing. But it's actually satanic and demonic. And the thing that I was taught um, was it came with a warning. And it said, and she this teacher said that when you do this blood ritual, know that you will be tethered to this place on earth. So wherever you place your moon blood, you're literally creating a link between you and evil, you know, and so it's something that um, people just need to be aware of and understand the depth of like the power of our blood, power of blood in general. Absolutely. And when I um, co come into more of like a birth, how this correlates to birth too, many people in the new age will um, give birth and then they will give their uh, placenta or the blood from their birth, they'll bury it like on a tree on their property, or they're again, kind of sacrificing it to mother earth, uh, for giving this life. And that is just another way that people do that. Because I remember thinking, oh, maybe I should like bury my placenta somewhere <laughs> because I did a home birth. And again, this is when I was deep in the new age. And um, I'm so thankful that I did not do that. Um, but absolutely, people do not understand a lot of times the depth of the spiritual forces behind all of these practices and what is really driving these practices. And they all, they're all pagan. I mean, we look back in the Bible and like, um, the little G God Molech, people would sacrifice their children to this God and, um, watch them burn alive, which is really, really disgusting. Um, but it has been happening for thousands and thousands of years. And now it's just becoming more accepted through the form of like abortion, like you mentioned, or again, just sacrificing your blood, giving your blood in any way to mother earth, uh, is very demonic. Yeah. And so you were creating courses, you are, deep in all of these rituals, teaching rituals, creating all of this. And when did you begin to have kind of a wake up that, Hey, maybe something is not right here. Was there a specific moment experience? How did Jesus save you out of all of this deception? Yeah. So it started in like 2019. I started to just be curious and I started to watching, watch sermons online out of nowhere like I had no idea where that came from and I just started to watch and I binged like I watched hundreds of sermons and so and that was like the point where the Lord was starting to speak to me I was still working for those demonic um, companies and so um, he was like preparing me and then um, in 2020, he fully woke me up as soon as I finally got free from those contracts working with those women. And one month later, I was saved. He, um, I had a dream with Jesus and he started to tell me the name Zebedee. And, mm. and I was like, okay, this is so weird and specific. And he just, Jesus was staring at me in the face and just saying Zebedee, Zebedee. So I would remember it. Mm. And so of course I look it up and I see he's the father of James and John, the apostles, and um, he started to work through me like this message of how much faith the parents of the apostles had to have to allow their their young boys to go and follow Jesus and like kind of saying to me, like, you have to have a lot of faith because of what I'm going to be, 
you know, bringing you through. Um, so that was like kind of the beginning. And then after that, um, I started to have these feelings about getting a Bible. Um, and so I didn't have any idea how many translations there were when I was, uh, you know, moving into being a believer. And so I researched that and I picked a Bible that I thought would be great for me. And then I haven't stopped reading since. And I feel like I got saved by the word. Um, I really just kind of became just so deeply in love with God through his word that I started to see all the places where I was doing, you know, sinful, horrible things. And I repented and then I was just his child. And from then on, you know, that has been the case for me. Mm. I have been hearing more and more testimonies of Jesus appearing in people's dreams, which is really cool, along with um, even Muslims, like a lot of Muslims are testifying to seeing Jesus come to them in their dreams, and then understanding that he is God, he is the way, the truth, the life, that no one can enter the kingdom except through him, through following him. Um, and I, that's really beautiful. And it's wild how he will use social media, YouTube, and uh, Instagram to begin to plant seeds in our hearts and our minds, even when we're still deep in the deception, because I started seeing new age to Jesus testimonies just popping up. And I'm thinking, what is this? And I had never seen that in my algorithm before my feed. And then of course, the more you watch, the more come <laughs> through. And so that's how the seed began to be planted for me. Um, that's really incredible. And then the Bible. So I've had many uh, new agers who are beginning to understand that there's a lot of deception in the new age. They are more curious about Jesus, but they don't understand the importance fully of reading scripture. And we know Hebrews 4, 12 tells us uh, for the word of God is alive. It's active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. So for you, um, can you speak a little more about how reading the Bible really opened you up to God's love and that everything that you were doing in the new age was actually deception? Yeah. So what I did when I started to read the Bible was that I knew I wanted to read it cover to cover. And so um, if anyone who knew me before I was saved would know that I could keep a habit for like seven days and then quit. So the fact that like I really stuck to this I knew it was the Holy Spirit it was not me it was God who wanted me to know him and so I started reading I got I used the U version app to kind of like guide me of like what to read every day that really helped me in the beginning and then it just kind of like went through at first I was reading as a new ager and I was reading for myself and then when I started to read to understand and love God, things just completely broke open for me. And I think like that's the area of time where I was saved because I started to read, you know, not what I could get out of it. Like, where am I in the story? I think even we can kind of get caught in seeing sermons like that sometimes of like they are self-helpy instead of like biblically sound. And I think that that can be a trap even, you know, for Christians um, because it makes you feel good and it, and you feel like you get something from it. Um, and so once I had that awareness of like, okay, I'm not going to read for me. I'm going to read to know and love my God. Um, things just really broke open and it just felt so amazing. And I think I hear a lot sometimes of like people thinking, oh, the Old Testament is so challenging. And I just really didn't feel that way because I feel like the Holy Spirit was really just like guiding me through and teaching me how to love him and to like figure out, okay, this is like Jesus is in every book of the Bible. He's not just in the New Testament. And so we just have to kind of get that education or or get those books and resources or get in a really biblically sound church to help us um, to understand and how to grow. And doing all of those things together, I think is really helpful. As, and those are the things that helped me as a believer. Absolutely. And like you had touched on, it's the Holy Spirit who gives us that strength and understanding and hunger for God's word. And so, of course, praying to the Holy Spirit, asking him to really guide and direct you and give you that hunger can also be really helpful. And I all of a sudden had a hunger for the word too, um, when I began that journey. And it's really amazing 
uh, how the more I read, the more I fall in love with Jesus and feel that deepened connection and intimacy with him and with God, which has been really powerful for me to keep going. And it is, it's when we meditate on his word and have those specific verses stored up on the inside in those moments of challenge and hardship and pain and struggle and um, the spiritual warfare, we can use those as a sword as a spiritual weapon against the enemy, which has been incredible. Um, so your sanctification journey, what did it look like on the business end for you? Yeah. So the Lord was like, no, I want you to be coaching, but you have to learn how to coach differently. That was like one of the things that was a big fear of mine. And I stopped coaching completely for a while because I didn't want to do it wrong. I didn't want to you know, lead people astray. Um, you know, when you're saved, it's like, I always come, I understand that verse where you're born again, because my mind and my thoughts and my actions and everything I was interested in, the things that I used to do in the new, new age were like repulsive to me. And I never looked at them or thought about them again. Like he wiped my mind clean. And so I know that I had been teaching these things and then I'm like, okay, what do I do? You know? So I definitely took a step back. I enrolled in a Christian coaching program to, who, from someone who I really um, respect. And she was so helpful in, in kind of like guiding us of, you know, like how to pray for clients and what's biblical and what's unbiblical, you know, the, the differences between secular and biblical counseling, that kind of thing. And that was really helpful for me. Um, I did, of course, have a super new age business, which I completely tore down. Um, I had, I was selling flower essences. Um, that was like a big part of like my healing journey. Um, and of course, flower essences I find are demonic because of the way that they are created, the way they're spoken about. Um, they're homeopathic, but they are um, the always kind of made in ritualistic ways and they are all based around the chakra system. So I had to completely let that go. And um, yeah, I just got repulsed by them too. Like I didn't want them in my space. It threw all my stuff out. Um, I was really into crystal healing as well. So I stopped teaching that all those things that were of the new age I had to let go of. And it was like, I wasn't afraid of that. I didn't feel like, um, like a disappointment. It was like a relief. And so that was such a blessing to me that he did that for me. And then he's just, you know, in this time, just been kind of building me back up, helping me to see, you know, like where I can be a useful tool for his kingdom and kind of guiding me now, but, um, in like a, a paced way, not in a, the old version of me would have been like impatient, um, like hustle, move. I got to do these things. I have to be successful. I have to succeed in these things. And I have to create new offerings all the time, all that kind of stuff. And that was from like an unhealed place inside of me. And once Jesus like plugs that up and like heals you from the inside, you don't have that desire anymore. Like you have this like peace. Like that's the biggest gift he's given me is his peace. It's just like a blanket that constantly covers me in my life. And I feel no matter if there's crazy things happening, um, no matter like we went through some sad things of someone passing away in our family. And mm -hmm. even though we like we were grieving from that, we also like have this peace of the Lord that we just know that he's just covering us and that, you know, just abide in him. And um, yeah, so. Yeah. And I love that you touched on the peace because I think many people in the new age, especially if they came out of, uh, like a uh, religious spirit in their old church or church hurt, they think that church is workspace or to be a Christian is workspace, but in reality, it's the new age that's workspace. Uh, you're constantly having to do new courses, new workshops, new retreats, constantly having to get healing sessions, especially if you're a quote unquote healer, practitioner, guide. Um, it was the most oppressive season of my life. And Jesus really opened my eyes to that. Now I don't do any of those things. And I've never felt more free, which is, it's hilarious how the self-help industry, the co a lot of the coaching industry um, in general, it will suck you in that you constantly need to be improving yourself. Otherwise you are completely worthless. And absolutely. I think that 
um, people have specific wounds. I had the exact same wound that you did of like feeling I constantly needed to do something. Otherwise I wasn't good enough. And Jesus has also been healing that within me. Uh, and it's been just, yeah, so freeing. Um, I'm, I'm so thankful and yeah, amen that you were saved out of that as well. And so as you go through this sanctification journey, slowly seeing that you can use all your gifts for God's kingdom and for um, him and to really glorify him and support others through this process. Did you begin to go through any spiritual warfare? Did you lose friends? Did you experience challenges within the journey? What did that look like for you? Yeah, I lost friends for sure. Um, I think that what was really hard for me is I thought that they were real new age friends. Like when I was in the new age, I thought they were real friends. But then I did have so many experiences of tra transactional relationships. Like I was always just giving out. And then when I stopped giving or there was a pause or a lull, they would ghost me. And then I would just feel even more worthless and like I'm not good enough, you know. So um, I definitely lost um acquaintances clients got upset with me and followed me which is totally fine I expected that but there were like one or two friends that I thought were real friendships that they were like appalled that I was following Jesus and um some of the judgment started to come up um from like on their side of um you know like this is so like low level of you like you're being like it's embarrassing like why do you believe this stuff you know that this is all joke um, Jesus is nothing, you know, like we know in new age, he's an ascended master and that's it, you know, like you can pray to him, you can hang out with him, but like, he's not something that you have to like give your life to. And they just did not understand. And the funny thing is I wasn't, um, you know, evangelizing to them. I just still wanted to be a friend to them, you know, and see how maybe that could work out, you know? And, um, yeah, just, I got dumped. <laughs> yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I have very similar experiences and many of the friends I had in the new age, we were never that close anyway, thankfully. Um, but I did have like one friend in particular where I thought, Oh, like this is going to be a lasting friendship. And right when I came out of the new age and I actually did share my story and testimony and, uh, kind of evangelized a little bit because I'm so passionate. I mean, of course, you know, you're, you become so passionate about, okay, Jesus really is the way because so many of us that get into the, the new age in to begin with, we're truth seekers. Like we're just looking for the ultimate truth. And so when we find it, we're so passionate about sharing it and how Jesus has transformed our lives. Um, but the Bible tells us that we will be persecuted in his name, that we'll be mocked and all of those things um, for following Jesus. So of course it's like no surprise, but it is still hurtful when those people, um, just fall by the wayside, ignore you, ghost you when you begin to follow Jesus. But part of me is like, you know what? I, I want to fill those relationships with other sisters who are following Christ because we need that support around us. And so I think that um, everything happens for a reason. Jesus really guides us to the right people in our lives that can fill those voids. But you continue to pray for those people, of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so now that you are in this stage of beginning to, um, at the beginning of your journey, you begin to see that you can use all the skills that you had to coach new believers out of the new age. So that's really your focus now. And so do you have any words of encouragement for new believers or those who are just beginning to understand that they have been in deception of the new age? Yeah, I think it's important to just, um, one of the things I encourage my clients to do is to actually speak out their testimony. I think that that's an important part of knowing who you are in Christ and what he's done for you. And I think sometimes we can think that how we are saved out of wherever we've been, um, we can kind of have a lie of the devil thinking that our our story doesn't matter. And I think that that is something that's important for us to kind of put and piece together. And, you know, so, and also like you'll have the opportunity to share it with your friends and family of, of the things he is doing or has done for you. And like, that's a good step. I also think it's important to have encouragement of, you know, like 
surround yourself with other believers or at least find yourself in a church that's biblically sound get yourself a bible you know if if you're a person who wants to just you know like you struggle in your like thought life or something like that to start to memorize scripture you know it doesn't have to be like these long passages but like one verse that you just hold in your heart and so like you're struggling in that day and you can just pull that and hold that and know that the Lord is with you I think that that's also important so just kind of setting a healthy foundation so that it will be less likely that when someone persecutes you or when you have a hard time you won't be discouraged but you'll be empowered because you know what the word says and you can trust in those promises from God. Yeah, absolutely. And the spiritual warfare piece, did you or do you continue to experience any type of spiritual warfare? I honestly didn't believe that spiritual warfare affected me for like a long time. And I actually had the most intense spiritual warfare this week. Mm -hmm. I had like three or four things happen. Um, I had been working with a client who apparently really needed a session because it was particularly around her and anytime we would speak, there would be challenges and difficulties. Um, I had um, a really intense experience when my father-in-law passed away. We were getting ready for his funeral and I literally feel like someone pushed me down the stairs. I fell down the stairs. It felt like someone pushed me down the stairs, but then at the same time, it felt like someone caught me at the bottom of the stairs. And so I, I hurt myself, but I didn't like break a leg like I should have. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband and my brother-in-law were in the room and they saw it happen. And it was just like this really crazy experience. Everyone said that it felt like it happened in slow motion. And of course, like my, my leg swelled up and there was like a huge bruise and it was painful, but it was, it just felt like one of those experiences, like, whoa, I've never, okay, this might be real. You know, I'm yeah. really feeling like, okay, what's happening here. And, um, yeah, so I, from that experience, I learned that I have to really pray more powerfully. And so I created, um, there's this person on YouTube called um, Sister Rita Club or something like that. And she creates these prayer Bibles. Like she teaches you how to like make a Bible and then you have all these tabs and mm -hmm. it kind of like helps you to pray the word with th like different themes that are in your life and things like that. So I did that and I, made an intention to like really start to be putting on the armor of God every day to be praying really powerful for protection over myself and my husband, um, praying over our home, all of those kinds of things, because I think I was just um, under an illusion from the enemy that spiritual warfare is real for other people, but not for me. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe I was thinking like I wasn't important for the kingdom you know, like we can have all kinds of lies that kind of um, like I'm still like processing a lot of the stuff that I've been through with my family and things like that. And so there are still like rooted wounds that the Lord is working on me to help me to grow and heal from. And I think sometimes like the, the, we can kind of accept these lies from the enemy and just walk around with them and think they're completely fine. And we don't a think to ask the Lord to walk us through and, and kind of unpack them with us um, until something more extreme might happen. Absolutely. And I feel like for myself, my own journey, I experienced a lot of spiritual warfare almost immediately. <laughs> like right when I renounced all things new age, it's like, boom, a light just switched. And all of a sudden the enemy was no longer trying to disguise himself as light and love. Um, and he was coming at me full force. So started experiencing nightmares and feeling a presence in my room, uh, attacks against my finances, attacks against my business. It was just like, boom, 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 boom. I got jury duty. It, like This all happened within like a two week period. It was wild. Um, and something I recently started talking about on the podcast is deliverance and something that I did was go through a deliverance minister and start to get that um, deliverance from some of those spiritual forces that I allowed in my life from the new age that a lot of times hide because, you know, they don't want to be seen. Um, and when I start going through that process, 
then it started, I mean, things, I even felt it more in my life. Um, but I also felt freedom at the same time. So it was like, okay, I know I'm uncovering something here, releasing some chains and um, some shackles that have still been binding me down to the new age. Um, so that's been really powerful too. What are your thoughts on, of course, everyone has different thoughts on deliverance, but what's your thought on that? I think deliverance is almost necessary for everyone that comes out of the new age because we're literally living our lives with demons. Like we've welcomed them in some cases into our bodies, like if we're channeling or we're meditating. Um, and it's just, it also affects the people we share a home with, um, share space with. Like my husband um, gets sometimes night terrors like he did when I was saved and then um like he'll he'll have like a really like angry moment and then that night he'll have a night terror so we know how powerful emotion is and it's not to say like you shouldn't be angry it's like what you like you have to process the anger and he knows now to process the anger before it goes to bed like he will not go to bed until he feels like he's completely come down from it and he's prayed about it so that's an important piece for us and just making sure that um yeah, I mean, I don't, it, one thing that's hard is like, you don't, I've found a hard time. It's a hard place to find deliverance ministries, like in my area. So it's like, you have to do like find people like online. And then, you know, sometimes you need something more. And so like that has been a little bit of a challenge. But um, yeah, overall, 100%. Um, there's a lot of people on YouTube that I like who do deliverance ministry. And, you know, there's some people who like disagree with it. or think that it's taking it too far, but when you see a person who's possessed, you know, it, like you see it in their eyes and it's just so sad because, um, they deserve that freedom. You know, they don't deserve to be oppressed like that. And, you know, unfortunately all of these new age practices that are just becoming commonplace here in our culture, everyone thinks it's just totally fine. It's okay. Just let, you know, like let them have fun. It, they'll get it out of their system, but really like these forces can follow you. And like one of the things that was a challenge for me that I am getting continued support for is like generational curses. That is something that I experienced. And I know that the Lord was um, inviting me to be the curse breaker. And it's like, I don't want to be the curse breaker, but he's putting that in my in my lap for a reason and I'm going to be obedient to that as best I can so I make sure that I um, look for people who are trusted and um, have that experience to kind of like help me through those processes when I need to absolutely yeah we have to use the holy spirit really go to god and ask okay use that discernment can you give me the discernment here is this person legit because absolutely there i think there's a lot of people out there um who aren't and could be taking advantage yeah. of people number one no one should ever be charging you for deliverance that should be given freely um most all deliverance ministers will accept donations or tithing like every other church or minister but you should never have to pay for deliverance. I really believe strongly in that. Um, and I didn't really realize the depths of it until I went through my first session and I did mine virtually. Um, and I was shocked, like truly shocked at what happened when she began the deliverance prayer and like what was coming through me. And, um, yeah, it just made me realize like how real it all is and that spiritual warfare that we face and how the demonic can come in through the occult, through yoga, through Kundalina kundalini and all in meditation and crystals and astrology and all those pagan practices all that witchcraft they can come through but like you just mentioned they can also come through generational curses they can come through trauma that we have in our lives unfortunately you know the enemy loves to attack when we're vulnerable emotionally physically spiritually and um unfortunately many of us are carrying these things with us and not even realizing it um, or saying, oh, I'm just having these intrusive thoughts because I have anxiety and not giving more thought to the spiritual side of that and what you may have potentially opened up to or your ancestors, your family, what's kind of been carried down the lineage. Um, so it's very powerful. And I think that in the beginning, many new agers are cautious because we've seen like just how real all of this is and how um, magic is real, how it actually works and being cautious of not 
getting entrapped by like new agey Christian beliefs and ensuring that it's all, like you said, biblically sound and, um, deliverance is biblical. And I also follow many deliverance ministers, but that's been a, a big part of my journey and something that I think that absolutely, if you've been in the new age, if you've dabbled in it, you really need to seek someone in your area or seek, um, someone online that can help guide you through that process because it can be incredibly freeing. Yeah, absolutely. It's important for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so where are you now in your business? Tell us what you're doing with clients. Yeah. So right now I'm um, working with clients, basically people who are newer believers or ex new agers, and they're just confused about like, what, like, what are the steps? How do I do this? And usually it's um, based around a business, or, you know, like something important, like in their marriage. Um, I think that that was something I was very scared about. My husband and I have been together for like almost 20 years. And um, it was, I was so worried that he wouldn't want to follow this path, or he would kind of like reject me and my love for the Lord. And luckily, he was also saved after me. And so that was such a blessing. And so one of the things that I've been helping clients with, too, is just helping them to understand, okay, what's our family culture now? Like, what do I want to create? A lot of people come to me, like, they believe the lie that they didn't want children, and now they want children. Um, how do I live um, a non feminist life? <laughs> you know, like, how do I become more, um, you know, loving and kind? Um, and how do I bring the Lord into my everyday? I think that that's something that he's been placing on my heart a lot is like, that, you know, like, what is the first that like the next best thing that I can do for the Lord, whether that's like folding the laundry, taking care of my baby, or that's like, answering emails or like working, you know, whatever that case might be, like, really just helping to love their spouse in a way that is Christ centered and just kind of like walking their path and then, you know, just like a, an open hearted and loving way that they haven't done um, before in their lives. Absolutely. I think that's so important, especially like you had mentioned, if you were in the new age, because a lot of times too, something I experienced is, um, feeling division between my husband, and I, or, or during the new age. And, um, it's something that the enemy, of course, he tries to break up families. I also believe the lie for the longest time that I didn't want any children for over Same. a decade. Yeah. Um, he brainwashed me and, um, all my desires turned to having more money, being more successful, having this big business. When in reality, right after I was saved out of deception, immediately I had this strong desire to like just be at home, have more babies, and um, be closer with my husband. And something that I've been working through as well is like just being more um, submissive to him and letting him be the head of the household. Yeah. And because you are, you, um, have this persona when you're in the new age that, you know, you're powerful and you can do all these things and become all these things. And be, so because of that, it really changes the dynamic in your relationship. So I love that you touched on that. I think that that's so important and something that um, even on a demonic level, uh, spirit spouses, I don't know if you've heard of spirit spouses or how that can affect marriages, but essentially you can have um, a spirit who is, um, having sex with you in your sleep, like women who will have these like orgasms in their sleep, all of these things. And that can actually put, um, a, a bind between you and your husband and pull you apart on the physical realm. And, um, so there's a lot, uh, there's a lot there, uh, when it comes to recovering the marriage and culture and your beliefs. And then also, the steps. Okay. What steps do I need to take? Uh, because I've had so many women reach out to me even and say, okay, like I, everything, the scales have been lifted from my eyes. Now what? I don't know where to go from here. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that work is really important because I'm hearing more and more and more people coming out of the new age and understanding the truth. And it's really incredible to see, but it can leave a lot of confusion or believing um, false ideologies like the Christ consciousness or, you know, all of these different segues that we can kind of take um, around what does it mean to be a Christian? There's a lot of um, 
false doctrine out there. So absolutely guiding someone biblically through it all, I think is really essential. And when we look back in um, the Bible too, like discipleship and mentorship and all of that is, it's so important to have those people within our lives. And some of us just, we're not plugged into a community yet, especially if we just came out of the new age. So having someone like you to guide through that process, I think is really essential. Yeah. I just think about like myself as a new believer and like what I struggled with, because there's definitely like a learning curve. You, you kind of like go and like, Oh, I'm going to read this book. And then you realize they're not like a good person to be <laughs> learning from. And then you're like, okay, I'm recognizing that. And then the Holy spirit sending you to another resource or another teacher. And so it's just kind of a little bit of like an overwhelming experience because you don't know what you don't know until like you learn through it. And so I just like to be um, a resource for my clients. So like, ask me anything. I love to be able to share books and resources. Um, People who I resonate with doesn't mean that you will, but also just kind of reminding them that you have the Holy Spirit, you know, like you are a living temple of God and you can um, just begin that process of really deeply understanding like who you are now, your identity is in Christ and what that looks like and just helping you to embrace this new life that because everything is different. And um, I think even that just like some of my clients, you know, they change their political beliefs. They change things that they believe that were so ingrained in them um, about their families, you know, just struggles that they had no longer kind of have that effect. But now they have like grief and a, and a period of mourning. And what do they do with that and how they don't you know, resonate with their friends anymore? And how how do you kind of figure that out? And how do you love people well? you know, without being judgmental or kind of being too intense, you know, that seems to be a little bit of a theme as well. So it's just so much. Absolutely. And I think the waiting season is something that many uh, ex new agers go through, uh, especially if they dismantle like a business or a side hobby or leave a yoga community of, okay, I've left all of that. I've dismantled it. Now what? And there's a lot of times just like silence and coming from God and you're not really understanding where you need to go. You feel kind of confused what's next. And uh, it's something that I went through within my own journey. So absolutely just to have some guidance and encouragement and support along the way, I think is so important. Yeah. hundred percent. Amazing. <laughs> and so you also have a podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about your podcast and what you talk about there? Yeah. My podcast is called like the dove. And I mostly talk about, it's like kind of a mix. I talk about all of the kind of new age things that I was a part of that I didn't know were an issue and were a sin. And so I talk about things, some of the things like we talked about today, I have an episode on um, like moon blood rituals, the episode about the um, like channeling to the core of the earth and how that's, you know, literally going to hell um, (laughs) and things like that, because Um, I think there's just um, unawareness about certain things, especially things that we like that's that meditation is usually called a grounding meditation and it's literally everywhere in the new age. And so I think it's so important that we bring awareness to that. So I mostly do that and then do encouraging episodes to kind of just um, get into the word and to kind of just be encouraging and and helpful with how to walk out your faith in your life. Absolutely. So very similar. If you like these episodes then you're going to love Eliza's podcast as well. And I just wanted to briefly touch on the grounding at the core of the earth. It's wild. I went to this breathwork retreat in Costa Rica in um, 2020, right before the lockdowns. And every single day we did chanting to um, like Shakti and all these Hindu gods. And then we would do a core of the earth meditation where the teacher would guide everyone to visualize themselves slowly ascending into the core of the earth. And uh, many people during that retreat were manifesting demons. Back then I thought, oh, they're just healing. Well, healing is not slapping yourself in a breathwork session, screaming, Uh, moving like a kundalini, like a snake, ripping all your clothes off, speaking in a light language, um, 
now it's so clear when I look back. So, you know, people ask me, well, what breath work is fine. You're just breathing. Well, you don't understand you're altering your state of consciousness. You're opening yourself up to all of these things. Every single breath work teacher I knew was, um, combining tarot cards, sage, the chakra system, energy healing, sound healing in all of their sessions. Um, like literally every single one it's as new age as it can get. And <laughs> So is guided meditation for the most part, which is why I stopped doing all of that. And the thing is, is there are so many verses in Psalms, in the Bible, so many different songs that we can meditate on, that we can sing and repeat and meditate on that. That is what it means to meditate on the word. And if you can't memorize scripture, then, you know, what is the point of doing a visualization meditation where you're grounding into the center of the earth to quote unquote, calm your body. When in reality, you're, you're potentially connecting to a dark spiritual force. Like I just, it, the irony in it is just so wild. Um, but yes, I, um, can completely resonate and agree with everything you said about what that means to when you think you're grounding your energy and what is actually happening. Yeah. It's so crazy. And like the Lord literally convicted me of that. He was like, remember when you used to do these meditations, you used to teach this, well, this is what it is, <laughs> you know? And he was like, it almost feels like he was like laughing about it because he's like, yeah, now, you know, and it, and it was just like, oh, in my heart, because I was like, I cannot even believe this. And I know that this is true. I know. Oh, 100%, yeah. you know, you and just feel like, sick to your stomach. Like, and also meditations uh, oh. are like, um, you are supposed to empty your mind where the Bible is meant to fill your mind with the word like that's the intention of it and so it's just so funny how there's like little truth in new age so that it feels real and then Uh it just kind of destroys you absolutely when you take it on and get into the depths yeah and everything's a counterfeit like literally and you look you can look at so many different practices in the new age and how they're a counterfeit to christianity just like meditation and then verse meditating on the scripture, like you just mentioned, when you were emptying our mind, going to a hypnotic state, going to an altered state of consciousness, that is an open door to the enemy and the demonic to come into your life and to begin to kill, steal, and destroy. It is not something that we should be trying to achieve on a daily basis to find peace. Because as you experienced, once you renounce all of that, give your life to Jesus, recommit to him, the peace is there. And you don't have to do anything. <laughs> it's just there, which is so incredible. Crazy. I'm so grateful, you know. Yes. I think I still feel, I'm glad I got through my testimony without crying. I never do. So this is like you feel the Holy Spirit and you just feel so touched and so loved. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes too, when you're praying and you have an answered prayer, um, you really feel like, oh, wow, I forgot, like God sees me. Like he literally is listening to me, He's watching me all day long. He cares about every detail of my life and he wants me to, to feel his love. And it's like, I'm so grateful, um, that he came and he saved me when he did. I think sometimes I wish it was like when I was younger, you know, like, I don't know why couldn't have happened sooner, but you also begin to really trust in his plan and his his special perfect pacing for you, um, which is also just such a blessing. Absolutely. And yeah, there's a reason why we went through all of that time, the new age, because of course now we're speaking against it and we can help really open the eyes of others who are still in deception or still dabbling in some of these things, thinking it's totally harmless and that they're, they think that they're healing. They think they're evolving, but in reality, they're just staying in a hamster wheel doing the same thing over and over again and getting a little bit of peace, a little bit of healing, and then getting sucked back in and over and over. That was my case. And once you're out of it, you do, you just feel so free and so thankful. Um, like you had just touched on that God recognized you and that he continued to seek after you. And it's just, yeah. So amazing. (laughs) Truly. Like there are no words. Incredible. Okay, Eliza. Well, I loved having you on today. Love sharing your story. Is there anything else that you want to share? Um, I don't know. Maybe if you're someone who is like a new believer, just, you know, keep praying, you know, pray with, you know, a conviction in your heart to just keep going. And, and, and anytime you have like those lies or those doubts, just remind yourself that that's of the enemy. That's not of God. 
God doesn't condemn, the devil does. So if you're in a place where you're like, oh, I'm hearing things that I think are from God, just, you know, kind of use your Bible and use it and look inside your word and see where you can kind of refute that because God is never going to tell you to do something that's not in the word. And I think that's something that I didn't understand for a long time. And when we come to be saved, we have all of our wounds with us. And I think it can just be really helpful to remind you to bring them to the feet of the Lord and just have an open heart and allow him to work through your life instead of kind of like resisting or feeling like you're in control still and just, you know, allow him to do the work that he wants to do through you because he saved you for a really, really, really special and important reason. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for those words. Uh, I feel encouraged after talking with you. So definitely go check out Eliza's podcast, her coaching programs. I'll leave all the information within the show notes and yeah, just thank you again, Eliza. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. <laughs>